Now I'll read today's passage. Today's passage, and today's title is titled Zechariah's Prophecy, and today's passage is Luke 1, verses 67 through 80. Once again, Luke 1, verses 67 through 80. Now I'll read. His father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he said through his holy prophets of long ago. Salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. To show mercy to our ancestors and to re remember his holy covenant. The oath he swore to our father Abraham. To rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to be able enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, Will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven, to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. And the child grew and became strong in spirits, and lived in the wilderness until he appeared publicly to Israel. Please allow me to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the season of Advent, and thank you for the opportunity to be able to worship you with so many、uh, friends here today. Dear Lord, We just read from the passage of Luke, and we are excited to be able to experience your grace、uh, during this time period of Advent. Dear Lord, allow the Holy Spirit to work greatly in our lives. Allow us to be able to realize this. Please watch over Pastor Anjiki as he gives his message this morning, and allow us to, him to be able to say your word directly to us. We thank you for this time of worship. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. So, today there's people visiting for the first time, and we thank you so much for coming to visit us, and thank you for、uh, sharing this time of worship with us. Today, we're having a child、uh, celebrate a dedication ceremony, and we thank you so much for the people who, from the family members who have come to attend for that. We're going through the book of Luke, starting at the beginning and going in order. Today, we're up to、uh, Luke 1 67 through 80, and we're going over Zechariah's prophecy today. There was once a time when one Japanese person went to America. To use this and was going to ride the subway system. He wanted to go to New York. So he, he wanted to say in English, go to New York, and he said, to New York. What he got in response was two tickets. He, he, said, he, did, he didn't mean to say two, he, he said, for, for, for New York. So when he said for New York, though, he got four tickets instead. <laughs> So he got confused and he was, he was saying it's not two, it's not four. He was trying to think of, and he was saying in J Japanese, um, the word um, and the word um in Japanese sounds like eight. And so then he got eight tickets. And then he said, no, no, no. And then his、uh, dentures <laughs> fell out. And then he said in Japanese,、uh, which is、uh, dentures, sounds like the word 11. And then he got 11 tickets. And so it was、uh, kind of an exciting event. <laughs> In today's passage,、uh, the person of Zechariah is、uh, an old, older man. If he had had dentures, he probably would have lost them several times because he had such a shocking life. First of all, 
he did the work of a priest for the Lord. There were many priests at that time, and he would go into the temple, or a priest would go into the temple to do work. They would、uh, decide this order by drawing lots, and、uh, drawing a lot was something you either may or may not have in your lifetime. So the person chosen would go into the、uh, the temple, and then and when Zechariah went in.、Uh, Uh, angel came and he was、uh, very surprised. So if he'd had dentures, maybe they would have fallen out. And this angel that、uh, came to him told him a very surprising thing. He told him that your wife Elizabeth will bear a son. Of course, he when he was、um, young he did want to have children, but Elizabeth was unable to become pregnant. Now they were both older, so no matter what way you were thinking, there was no way that they would be able to have children. However, the、um, angel told him that、uh, you will, your wife will have a baby. Zechariah was not able to believe what the angel told him. He kind of doubted it. Because of that, God told. Him that he would be silent until his、uh, what God said came to pass. So his words were taken away. This wasn't because his dentures fell out, but、uh, God did take away his ability to be able to speak. Then the time of came for his wife to have a baby, and she gave birth to a boy, just as was、uh, said by the angel. When they were deciding on the name, the、uh, relatives all got together to decide, and at that time the. Custom of the Jewish people was to use either the father's name or some relative's name for the baby. That was the custom. So everyone was、uh, thinking that、uh, the father's name would be good. So they were possibly, you know, telling her to name him Zachariah. But Elizabeth said, "No, the angel told me to name him John." However, the relatives wouldn't accept this because they said there's no one named John amongst us. Then they asked the father Zechariah what he thought, but he wasn't able to speak at that time. So they brought a board for him, and he wrote on the board, "His name is John." Then everyone kind of just、uh, agreed because there wasn't any way they could disagree with the father. When he wrote John, he was suddenly able to speak again. When he was able to speak, the first thing he said was, "What is mentioned here in its prophecy? It's speaking of his、uh, son and what his son will come to do." He was filled with the Holy Spirit when he was doing this. So this goes through verses eighty sixty,、uh, starting at verses sixty-eight. This、uh, this is、uh, has it comes from the Latin word of Benedictus. And that's、uh, the passage. What the passage is referred to. The two times ago we talked about Mary's、um, song or Magnificat. Now we're going over Zechariah's prophecy, which is called Benedictus. It's a very famous prophecy. As for the content, there are three main、uh, sections. The first section is talking about God's salvation. If you look at verse sixty-eight. It says, "Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel." So, it's saying that. Oh, it's also saying that、um, he will visit us, and it says because he has come to his people and redeemed them. In the old times in Israel, they were when they were slaves. They were in a、uh, very difficult situation, so they、uh, cried out to God, and they wanted to be freed. In that passage as well, God came to visit them. He came and and visit them in their、uh, hard situation, in order to be able to understand their troubles. He wanted to understand exactly what they were going through. In this passage here today, it's speaking of the same phrase in the, that he came to visit them, and the reason was to re- redeem them. In the Bible, it often、uh, refers of God being compassionate, compassionate to us, 
or redeeming us. And what this is originally referring to is referring, uh, freeing a slave, ran paying the ransom for a slave or a person that was captured. In the same way, God is redeeming us from our fear of death and sin. Here, God comes to us, and He gives His own life for us in or on the cross. And because of this, then we are free from our uh, free from death. God's salvation is something for that we cannot do for ourselves. It's uh, something that God does on His one-sided authority, and He frees us. That's what God's salvation is. So where does that salvation come from? It's mentioned in verse 69. It says, He has raised up the horn of salvation for us in the house of His servant David. In 73, it says, The oath He swore to our father Abraham. In other words, these two things are referring to Jesus Christ and where he would come from. Jesus Christ in the uh, in history didn't just come suddenly appear out of nowhere and tell us to believe in him. That's not how it happens. Jesus Christ was born, and before he was born, thousands and thousands of years ago, before that, uh, the pro uh, prophets would um, prophesied about him. If you look in uh, verse 70, it says, as said through, through the holy prophets long ago, which is mentioned from the Old Testament, like Isaiah or J Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Amos, or Micah, these uh, prophes prophets prophesied about the birth of Christ uh, several hundred years before. And this would be a descendant of David and Abraham. He would be born in Bethlehem, and he would be born from a virgin, Mary. This um, Messiah would come to die for us, for our sins, and all this came to pass. In other words, what's being said here is that the person of Jesus Christ would be the person who could say provide salvation for all par for all people around the world. In the New Testament, this is uh, also referred to by Paul, who said the following: "For it is great by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves; it is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast." This is Ephesians two verses eight through nine. In various re religions, there's one thing that is common, and that's said that we have to do something in order to receive something from God. But in the Bible, it talks of salvation, which is completely different. It says that God has done everything for us, so all we need to do is receive it. God has done this for you. He has done and prepared something for us so that all we have to do is to take it. That's, he has prepared all we need for salvation. We just need to say thank you and receive it. There's a country by the name of Norway, and there was a king a long ago who is Olive the Fifth, and he was a very kind uh, king. There was one a notice about him, a story about him, and one day he was going from his palace to the station, walking in the road. He came along a homeless man, and when the homeless man recognized the king, he called out to him. He said, King, King, please listen to me. I haven't had anything to eat for a few days. Please help me. The, the nice king uh, listened to him and came up to him and, and said, What's your name? And he said, My name is John. And he said, have you really not eaten? And he said, yes, I haven't eaten. Then he said, okay, well, tonight you please come to my palace and you can have uh, dinner tonight at my palace. I will prepare it for you, so please come. So the king said this, and he gave uh, John a um, paper that said, tonight you can come to my palace for dinner. And he wrote his name on it, signing it. So he gave him this uh, piece of paper. 
And he said, if you took it to the palace, then the guards would escort him in. That evening, John went to the palace holding this piece of paper and went to the uh, guards. But uh, of course, the guards uh, wanted to shoo him away. But uh, he said, no, I have a piece of paper. I've been invited by the king. And he showed them the paper. And then the guards confirmed the paper, and they realized it was the king's signature on there. They realized the king had invited him, and so the guards couldn't uh, deny him. So they let the homeless man into the palace. The homeless man went in, and he was uh, finally able to eat a good meal after such a long time. Then problem was the next day, the John came again to the palace. The guard said, well, no, you can't come in today. You know, yesterday was fine, but today you haven't been invited. However, he took out of the, the paper from his pocket and it says, no, it says, today I have invited you to dinner. <laughs> so he showed him the same paper, but it, it still said today on it. So the guards, the guards were saying, well, that was yesterday, not today, but it says today, John said. And so... The guards weren't sure what to do, and so they went and asked the, the king. The king smiled and said, well, it's okay. You can allow him to come in today. And so this happened uh, every day. <laughs> he came the next day, and it said, to, you know, he said, my paper still says today. And the king uh, finally just gave in and said, well, he could come as many times as he wanted And so until he was able to uh, get a job and make money, he did come every day. But if he, even if he had, had gone every single day, even if he had a job, he still would have been able to go to the um, palace. <laughs> so the moral of the story is to write the date on something. However, what God has promised us is uh, similar in the sense that his uh, salvation is available to us any day, and it's not a limited In the Bible, it says the following, Then let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. This is Hebrews 4.16. This is not something that has a deadline or a restricted date on it because we can come to God at any time and receive His grace and compassion at any time. We can come boldly from before God. We don't have to be prepared or have something. We can come freely before God, and that's what the Bible has to say. So as long as we hold on to this word, we can come to God at any time. We can ask him about any problem we have or anything we are needing help with. We can go any time, even several times a day. God won't say, oh, it's you again. <laughs> He will welcome us and have his hands open to us when we come to him, no matter what the situation is. In verse 74 and 5, it says, to rescue us from the hand of our enemies, to enable, to enable us to serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him in all our days. So this means that there are no exceptions for this every day. And we are to be holy and righteous before him. Before God, in order to be holy and righteous, well, what kind of person is that? Well, how about you? Are all of you pure and holy before God? If you say that, uh, you may lose your, um, patient, or your confidence. If you look in the book of Luke a little later on, it uh, explains exactly what a holy and righteous person is before God. If you look at this passage, uh, it's speaking of para uh, Pharisees who were very religious people. And there was also people at this time for ta uh, collecting tax. And this uh, section here is comparing a Pharisee and a tax collector. So the Pharisee, who was uh, very religious, uh, prayed as follows. He said, God, I thank you that I am not like the other people, the robbers, evildoers, and uh, adulterers, or even this, uh, this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. So what do you think? Is there anyone here who thinks they're better than this guy? <laughs> Can you say that you've never lied and that you've never done anything wrong? 
that you fast twice a week and that you um, give tenth of your learnings to God? Well, the next person was a tax collector. He said he'd beat his breast and he said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And Christ's um, response to this and his uh, definition of a holy and righteousness man was the second person, the tax collector, because the person before God who is holy and righteous is the person who recognized their sin and their weaknesses and their faults. And that person who depends on God is the one who cons is considered holy and righteous before him. If you say you are a wonderful person or you stand uh, right up before God, and God will not accept that. So uh, all of you are definitely people who can be holy, holy, holy but righteous before God. As it said here, we are to be used uh, by the Lord all the days of our life. Jesus says that, uh, he said, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. God never forgets us and he never leaves us alone. He always is thinking about us and watching over us every day. The next point, if Zachariah's prophecy is about John's mission, He's speaking of his son that was just born and exactly what kind of life he would lead. He's still a baby, of course, so no one would really be able to know how, what he would become. But uh, God spoke to Zechariah so that Zechariah would know what kind of life he would lead. If you look in verse 76, it says, And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High. So saying that uh, the son would become a prophet and would be called a prophet. To be called means, and in other words, summoned. So God would summoned um, John to be a prophet. So that means, if you read on in 76 and 77, that for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. So the son, John, would explain that the Messiah would come, but before that, he would uh, work to prepare the hearts of the people for the Messiah. Before John was born, God had put his eyes upon him and spoke about his life and what he would become. This type of thing is not something that happened just in John's life. In your life as well, the same thing has happened. You are not just here on this earth by chance. Before you were born, many long, long ago before you were born, God knew that he would be sending you and he had a plan to send you to be here. And that's why you are here in this country at this time and uh, why you are here. In the Old Testament, there's a person by the da name of David, and he spoke of this in this way in Psalm 139, 13 through 16. It says, and I will read the Living Bible translation. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit them together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. It is amazing to think about. Your workmanship is marvelous, and how well I know it. You were there while I was being formed in other seclusion. You saw me before I was born and scheduled each day of my life before I began to breathe. Every day was recorded in your book. So try and imagine this. If you were, you were in your mother's stomach now, and you may not remember this, but uh, you were <laughs> at some point there. Sometimes uh, small children do have a memory of this, apparently. Because it's right after they're born, they, maybe that's perhaps why they remember. But now all of you here, uh, <laughs> this is something long ago, so you've definitely forgotten. 
but we all at some point in time were in our mother's stomach and so if you think of yourself there you can realize God is looking at you and through you he has a plan of what he wants to do he has a plan for you so then you were born and come to meet God and now you're walking according to his plan it's pretty amazing isn't it this isn't some we're not just here in our existence by chance we are in the plan of the omniscient God we are loved by this God and we are here to love others Next, we'll go over point three, which is Jesus Christ's second coming. Verse 78 uh, is uh, speaking of the baby in Mary's stomach and what he will do. In verse 78, it says, Because the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven. In other words, Zechariah is referring to uh, Christ as the sunrise. In the Old Testament, the, old, old, the last prophet referred to as Malachi, and Malachi said this of Christ. He said that, um, but you who revere my name, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in its rays. So he's talking of Christ as uh, referring to him as a sunrise. That's when, when Jesus Christ came, he said, I am, the, I am the light of the world. Do you know what the, the work of light, the job of light is? Well, of course, it's to brighten darkness. In verse 79, it says, to shine on, on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the path of peace. So people who are living in darkness or who have darkness in their lives are able to receive light in this way and get rid of their darkness. That's the type of person that Christ, Christ would be when he comes. If you think about it, every person has some form of darkness in their hearts. This is something where they can't uh, resolve it all on their own and they have to rely on something else. There's a Christian international uh, lawyer by the name of Mitsuo Sasaki. And one thing that he often says is that before he became a Christian, he had a lot of darkness in his heart. He w there was many things he couldn't resolve. But when he came across Christ, he was able to get rid of all of his uh, troubles. These are the three things that he was worried about. The first one was anxiety. The second one was futility. And the third point was powerlessness. In one uh, speech he gave, he said the following. He said, I found Jesus Christ and my anxiety, uh, I was released from it. Up until then, in my life, I had always been anxi had anxiety about many things. For example, not passing a test, or failing at work, or getting sick. However, I wasn't able to resolve this anxiety um, but through studying or working hard at sports or anything. There was I couldn't find true happiness and joy either. I was unable to. He was unable to, of course, um, you can try to resolve anxiety that way, but it didn't work for him. He said that after he came across Christ, he realized that God was omniscient and that he would guide him. When he realized this, his, the heart, uh, this anxiety of his heart went away. Now, anything I do, I'm able to enjoy from my heart. The second point that uh, he faced was futility. He said, I was released from futility as well. Up until then, I studied hard and I did I worked hard and I had a nice family, but I realized that everything would just go away when I died. And so when I realized this, I was very uh, futile. However, by believing in Jesus Christ, I was given the gift of uh, everlasting life, 
and that I realized I can live forever in, Christ, in heaven. When I realized this, I was able to have hope. And in my life here on earth, I realized that I can love others, and that is my job and my reason for living. Because of this, now I'm able to live, uh, live a very meaningful and joyous life. The third point that he struggled with was powerlessness. There was many things he, I had to do, and, but I didn't have the power to do them. However, once believing in Jesus Christ, I was able to receive the, with God's wisdom and guidance. Now, any difficult situation I, fa situation I face, I am guided by God, and I am able to overcome many things. Through this, I can have miraculous resolution from God. So Jesus Christ is definitely the, the light of the world. He has come to provide light for us. Some other people may be facing inferiority complexes or a sense of guilt. Other people may be scared of uh, death. There are some people who may have trouble with uh, darkness in trying to relate with other people. But regardless of this, uh, Jesus Christ is the light. He is the sunrise. He is the light in our lives. So when you meet up with Jesus Christ, you can be released of your darkness. So in this coming week, please realize that you are uh, a receiving the light of Christ. Dear Heavenly Father, in this Christmas season, and the season of Advent as well, we thank you for this time of worship. Allow us to turn our hearts to Christ once again and to be able to accept his light into the dark places in our lives. Uh, allow us to be thankful people, Lord, in this coming week, Lord, please uh, walk with us and provide us the assistance when we need. We thank you in advance for this. Please allow us to be strong, Lord, and have courage. In this coming week, Lord, please use us to do uh, your purposes and uh, to be blessings to others. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we'll have a time of prayer and silence. I'll pray once more. May the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be upon each and every person forever. Amen. Today we will have communion, but before that we will have a child dedication ceremony. Um, please come forward. So please come in front of the microphone. And uh, you probably are well know of them. And this is Masahiko. So they will talk about why they chose the name Masahiko for their son and what they are hoping for their child in his life. Please go ahead. Thank you so much for your prayers all the time. This is uh, Masahiko, who was born on February 29th of this year. He is our oldest son. And he uh, was born exactly on his due date. My name is Tomohiko. And I was uh, thinking that if I had a son who had a similar uh, name, then it would be easy to um, respect him. <laughs> 
So I took the hiko from my name and put it in his name. And we were thinking for many months as to what to put before the hiko part in his name. I, when I, we wanted him to be a, a kind child. And so that is why we decided to be his name to be Masahiko. Uh, the word uh, calm or kind in, in Japanese has the reading of Masa, so it's Masahiko. This is not a uh, kanji that was taken directly from the Bible, but we wanted him to be a very kind and loving child, so that is why we uh, took that name for him. We want uh, him to reflect God's love and his joy to, and to pass that on to others. Thank you. So we'll pray a blessing over him. Dear Lord, thank you for this gift of new life to these two people. We are uh, grateful for this. We know that you have great plans for the life of Masahiko, and we thank you for this. We ask that you watch over his parents as they raise him, and that uh, they depend on you, and you provide guidance for them as they raise their son. We ask that there would be blessing of always over Masahiko's life, and he will be um, safe away from uh, the dangers of disease and injuries. We pray that Masahiko will be able to declare Christ as his Savior when he grows up. We're uh, looking forward to that day. We thank you for the faith that has been passed down in his family from uh, grandparents. And we ask a, a special blessing over him in his life and in that of his parents. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So clap, one, clap in celebration. So now we'll have communion this morning. So if you believe in Jesus Christ, we have uh, three different locations, and you can just line up in any of the three locations.